You're watching Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and we are joined by Jenna Buley. She is a member of the Wisconsin State Senate, a new position. Brand new. You had been in the Assembly for about four years? No, four years, two terms. Right. Four years. And now you're in the Senate. Talk right. to us about moving from a body of 99 mm -hmm. to 33. Perhaps it's the critical mass of people. I'm not sure, but it's a different culture. Okay. The Assembly is a very um, populist body. You're representing people on a very different mm -hmm. level. When you move to the Senate, you have a tendency to go more towards larger issues. Things uh, are, are more uh, calmly discussed, right. if you will. You know, when you were in the Assembly, you represented about 50,000 people, right. now 150,000 exactly. people. So obviously, it's a little more challenging mm -hmm. to be in touch, but like you said, the issues become bigger mm -hmm. and grander. Mm -hmm. What about, you know, Wisconsin's been known for some you know, partisan differences over mm -hmm. the last few years. Do you feel they decrease in the Senate because there are fewer of you and you need to be more friendly and get along? And Well, it, it, it certainly has been that case. Mm. I have found that uh, uh, personalities in the Senate, uh, there's a more of a willingness to get along. Um, the other thing, too, is that I represent such a large right. district, uh, the largest district in the state. That geographically, I have to, geographically, mm -hmm. I have to make sure that I keep my cool <laughs> and that I can relate to all of the senators in the body to make sure that I do the best things for the people in my district. So how do you serve, though, such a large geographic area, 150,000 plus mm -hmm. living all throughout this expansive space? Well, you learn about them. Right. You listen as much as you possibly can. And when you are such a diverse area, there are many different um, industries going on. Mm -hmm. I have farmers, loggers. Uh, people involved in the tourism industry and manufacturing. I've got everything. If it's an issue in Wisconsin, it will turn out to be an issue in the 25th Senate But district. that's got to be a treat because you become a mini expert on so many different areas. Well, of course I'm a mini learn, expert. And learn so much Absolutely. about so many great areas, such as education. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to speak with you about a specific issue as it relates to education in Wisconsin, and that's the question of vouchers. Um, as you know, Wisconsin currently has a program outside of Milwaukee and Racine, which allows a thousand students to attend a private school with funds following them. Mm -hmm. The governor's looking to expand that program without caps. Mm -hmm. I've spoken with Democrats and Republicans, and there doesn't seem to be uniformity in terms of parties. Some Democrats like it, some Republicans don't like it. You just don't know. And so talk to me about where you are with vouchers, where your constituents are with vouchers. Well, first of all, since I am representing a rural right. area, uh, we will have fewer people who are going to have the option mm -hmm. of a private school. There just aren't that many right. private schools out there. So the first thing my constituents are going to ask, what, what choice do I have? to send my child to a private school. I'm lucky that I can get them on a <laughs> right. bus and drive 45 <laughs> right. miles to the pri to the public school. So I do have a bit of a, of a hill to climb when right. it comes to convincing them that their tax dollars should increase choices for people in an urban area or an area far from where we are. On the other, on the other part mm -hmm. that makes this difficult for them is that they know how much our schools uh, are struggling with the money that they have now. There's a, the desire to keep property taxes low, and right. in our state, of course, we rely heavily on property taxes. And if you decrease state funding uh, on top of what is gained by the property tax revenue, there's not much revenue coming in. But is it a decrease? If the money is following the child, mm -hmm. the child's not being educated in the public school, so you don't have to pay for that child in the public school. So well, you see where you, I'm going? if you're in a rural area and you've got 20 kids in a class right. or in a grade and three or four of them leave, you still have to have a teacher one teacher. There are so many fixed costs, yet that money for those three or four children who will leave will leave, and you can't afford to pay for that one teacher. The opponents are very concerned. Mm -hmm. They have used language suggesting that if this program has no cap, Armageddon for public schools, is that fair? Is it that dire? Or should it be that the program maybe expand a bit but not have no cap. I think it's important to make sure you're clear on what your values are. I value public education. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to focus my concern on how can we best fund public 
education because I think we can all agree that we need a strong public system. Um, if people want to have another system, another parallel uh, set of choices, I'm not sure if in this state we're going to be able to afford to fund it. And it's interesting, like I said, I've spoke with members of both parties, and this issue is truly one that mm -hmm. does not divide along party lines. It's often along the lines of rural versus urban. Mm -hmm. How does that play out then? given that this is not a partisan question, well, but more of a geography question. Isn't it sad that we have to make it on one side or the other? Um, I would like it to be that we care about Wisconsin's kids, regardless of where they live. And unfortunately, people do get it, tend to get a little uh, close in, a little parochial, and they think, I want to worry about my kids. Mm. But we have to worry about everyone's kids, because everybody's kids are going to grow up and be citizens of the state. They could move. They're going to contribute in many ways. And I think that um, we need to look at this as a state problem or a state opportunity. In terms of state opportunities, there's been another option, another chance for bipartisanship, and that's on the question of sportsmanship okay. on the Sportsman's Caucus. Right, right. I say sportsmanship in the best sense, mm -hmm. and you have joined mm -hmm. this new Sportsman's Caucus. Tell mm -hmm. us all about it. It is Wisconsin, so well, give us a sense of who you are, what you are, and what you support. It is Wisconsin, and it's more than anything, it is northern Wisconsin, and when you live in Bayfield County as right. I do and when the culture is so oriented to the outdoors um, hunting is a way of life it always has been up there um, and right now we are realizing that uh, when you go in the woods and you hunt deer you need to be safe and right now the uh, standard is that you will wear blaze orange this is fascinating by the way you have to listen to this right. conversation I was fascinated by it explain what's happening blaze orange is visible to the human eye but deer cannot see color in the red spectrum okay. so the ideal color to wear in the woods when you're hunting deer is something that Deer cannot see, but another human can. Got it. There's a color that's better than blaze orange, and it happens to be pink. Pink. Blaze pink. Who knew? Well, who did know? Right. And it turns out that blaze pink can uh, reflect light to an even greater extent than blaze orange. So it would turn out to be even safer in the woods and than orange. And you know from what you speak, you mm -hmm. went to the lab this morning. I was at Tell the us lab. about that. I, I wish I was there. It Frustrated scientist. It was absolutely scientist. fascinating. I was there and I saw the, um, okay, spectrography. Got there it. is a range of wavelength of light in color. And when you're dealing with blaze orange, it, there are a certain number of lumens. That's the light that's reflected back. And with blaze pink, the lumens are even higher, mm. up into the 80s. And that is the safest color of all. But Please. as soon as you say pink, people get all over it. And it's about um, what does this mean? What does pink mean? It's it about me, women. That's and, right. Uh, I was reading some articles about it, and mm -hmm. there's some folks who are saying this will attract more women to hunting. Here's an, a net plus. Then it others could. are saying, you know, pink is a color of certain interest groups, and do we want. Well, it's right, a color. It's, it's a it's, color. It's a color. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it could be purple, except purple right. doesn't register with, the, with enough lumens, and pink does. So I can't, we can't help it that it's pink. It's right. a good color. If uh, more people choose to, whether they're a man or a woman, to hunt in uh, the fall and wear blaze pink, great. It's a wonderful tradition. It's got to be exciting joining the state senate. I congratulate you on moving to that august body, and I thank you for joining us. It's, it's really been, been my, my treat, my pleasure. Her name is Janet Buley. She is a member of the Wisconsin State Senate. My name is Brad Pomerantz. You are watching Charter Local Edition.